Good morning. Welcome to the virtual service of Orange Thrupp Christian Church in Fullerton, California. We'll be celebrating communion this morning, so please, if you haven't already, please take the opportunity at some point during the service to grab up the communion elements so that we may share in the Lord's Supper together. Join me for the call to worship. God, anoint Jesus to console the afflicted. Come, let us worship Christ, our comforter. God, anoint Jesus to emancipate the unslaved. Come, let us worship Christ, our liberator. God, anoint Jesus to bind up the wounded. Come, let us worship Christ, our healer. God, anoint Jesus to deliver the, deliver the troubled. Come, let us worship Christ our Savior. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its words. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. It tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, the sinners perfectly. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. It tells of one whose loving heart can fill my deepest woe, who in each sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. I invite you now to join me as we connect with God creation and with one another. Holy Spirit come. You are welcome in all places you find us. Be it in the church building, be it in our homes, in our cars, in our parks, and in our hospital beds. We thank you for yet another opportunity to come together by any means necessary to worship you intentionally while pushing the envelope to what it means to love our neighbor intimately. To paraphrase St. Teresa de Avila, Christ has no body but ours, no strength, no heart, no mind but ours. It is by us who manifest your love through action that all of creation basks in the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. I will be reading from
from Luke chapter 10, verse 25 through 37. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him for de half dead. Now by chance the priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put his, him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. May the Lord add his blessings to this reading. That was beautiful. Thank you so much for that, Casey. Good morning, church. My name is Renee Martin. Thank you, both people here and people in your homes. Thank you for inviting me to bring the word and message this morning on this Christ the King Sunday, as well as this Thanksgiving Sunday. 
Thank you for the team that has come together to be able to bring this message into your homes. And those of you out in the diaspora created by this pandemic, I thank you for continuing the practice to worship. For as while all this time we have spent coming into the church building, that has been preparation for days like this. And if we're going to survive in God's creation, this is the fast that we are enduring. So this morning, I'm going to start with the end of my sermon. In the military, we call this the bottom line up front. And so the end of my sermon is this. Love God intentionally. Love your neighbor intimately. For when we love God intentionally, by doing so, it pushes us and makes us stronger, making the love we give ourselves when we rest so much more fulfilling and making the love we extend to our neighbor that much easier. We love God. I'm sorry. I, God. I picked the scripture because this is the first time I've had the opportunity to preach at Orange Throughout Christian Church. And I want you to know this sacred part of me. The Reverend Dr. Howard Thurman had a saying that if he, could get, if he could just keep one part of the Bible, it would be Psalm 139. This was the cornerstone scripture from which he viewed the rest of his faith. For me, it's Luke 10, verses 25 through 37, commonly known as the parable of the Good Samaritan. The scripture, the scripture speaks to me because of my scientific background. My seeker self and the explorer in me likes how, how this correlates with the wellness dimensions that I learned when I was going through my chaplaincy training. The wellness dimensions are physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, and social, and that's just a few of them. There's actually a few more. But when I compare this to the call of love that Jesus affirms and illustrates in the greatest commandment, I see how the love has evolved not only in the church, but also in the secular, the secular world where we were constantly lamenting that God is missing. For me, I see a world where God is not absent, but rather there is a longing for God. A longing in where not only is, are the people longing for God, but God is longing for the world. So the lawyer asks, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus' response to this question is quite similar to the response I gave my teenagers when they asked me questions they were supposed to know the answer to. What does your book say? What did your teacher say? What did you write down in your notes? And so to the lawyer, Jesus responds, what does it say in the law? And the lawyer responds correctly. But then he adds on a clarifying question. But who is my neighbor? To say this another way, at which point am I no longer obligated to care for someone that's not me? Who am I allowed to other? Who am I allowed to despise? Who am I allowed to make my enemy? Jesus' response is the parable of the Good Samaritan, where not only one, but two holy men who are supposed to be looked up as examples pass by a presumed Jew who is, lay, who is laying on the side of the road. A third man, a Samaritan, is presented in the example as one that not only binds the wounds, but takes the man to an end to recuperate, and then turns around to put his board and care on his tab. Now, to, in this, back in that day, to compare the priest, the Levite, and the Samaritan is similar to comparing a judge, a policeman, and a convicted felon. 
Matter of fact, we're now going to practice some word substitution with some modern day examples. A man is going down the 91 freeway from Los Angeles to Fullerton. And just after he passes the Orange County line, he gets rear-ended. When he pulls over to the side, he discovers it's actually a ruse for him to get robbed by crafty carjackers. Now, this man isn't a punk. He's not a pushover. He's a veteran, matter of fact. And he knows how to fight. But while he puts up a valiant defense, he is ultimately overcome because the odds are four to one. He is beat, he's robbed for his iPhone and his wallet, and is left stumbling on the side of the freeway as the carjackers drive off in his car. Now by chance, a judge is going down the freeway, a superior court judge. Instead of using his access and power to summon the appropriate help, he figures that looks like a serious dispute, even a crime even. But my job isn't to enforce the law. My job is to enforce the rules for enforcing the law. I am going to let the system work its way and maybe the perpetrators will end up in my courtroom and I'll deal with it then. And so he drives on. Behind him, an off-duty LAPD motorcycle officer just finishing his shift is on his way back home. He sees the bloodied man stumbling down the road and realizes, not only is this not my city, this isn't even my county. I'm gonna let CHP figure this out. He does put in the radio call to let him know, hey, there's anybody still on the side of the road, but he too continues to drive on. And then next comes a convicted pedophile who has just been paroled and is on his way to one of many mandated meetings, seeing that the man who, that was attacked, he has pity on him. He pulls over, helps clean him up the best he can, helps him into his car, and then drives him to the nearest emergency room. Along the way, passing several schools and playgrounds that were a violation of law for him to be anywhere near. Which one of these men is a neighbor? I use this likely triggering analogy to illustrate to you just how offensive it is to make the Samaritan the exemplar in this parable. The same revulsion and shame I have for sharing that example in church also convicts me because in just in the, la just in the act of laying that example, I have affirmed the, degre the degradation of not just judges and motorcycle cops, but also of people who have likely been the victims of the same crimes that they have been convicted of. Denigration, while it may be necessary when teaching, it is not okay to affirm in our lived reality. Because by denigrating another, I am setting the limit of who is my neighbor and who is no longer, who I'm no longer compelled to love as myself. We are called to love God with all of our strength, all of our heart, all of our mind, and all of our soul because it makes us better. Just like working out in the gym ultimately makes you stronger and how studying ultimately makes you smarter and how by being present, it ultimately makes you more intuitive. We are reminded to love ourselves because the gains don't come during the workout. The gains happen in the kitchen during the recovery and the prep phases. Once you work out loving God and perfect loving yourself, loving your neighbor becomes increasingly easier. The common allegory of this scripture is that we are the man that is beaten and bloody on the side of the road, and that Jesus is the Samaritan 
who lifts us up and carries us to the end which represents heaven. And I also teach that this is the milk teaching of our faith. The meat of it is, is that we are Christians. On any given day, we are... On any given day, on any given day, we are the priest, we are the Levite, we are the Samaritan, we are the robber, and we are the innkeeper, as well as the man that's beaten and bloodied on the side of the road. When coming to the church on any given Sunday, we are the judge, we are the motorcycle cop, and we are the parolee. We have our good days, and we have our bad days. As Christians, we recognize that and remember that Jesus died for our sins yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The works that we do are not an installment payment for the forgiveness that we have purchased. It's not bail money, and it's not a fine. Our works are the reflection of God's given grace that we cannot possibly earn. Our works are merely a sample for the world to experience what God's grace looks like. We constantly cycle between working hard at loving God through our intentional stewardship of creation and intimately loving ourselves and extending that love to our neighbor. For when we religiously practice the art of loving God and the science of loving ourselves, we develop an overabundance of love that we have no choice but to share with our neighbor. But the scripture is not about defining who qualifies to be our neighbor. When Jesus asks, which of these men is a neighbor, Jesus doesn't put the onus on being a neighbor on the other. Jesus puts the onus of being a neighbor on you. Jesus is not defined by who, you, by who they are. Neighbor is defined by how you are. Let me say that again. Neighbor is not defined by who they are. Neighbor is defined by how you are. The question is no longer, are they worthy to be loved by me, but rather, am I worthy to be loving them? And the answer to that question is a resounding yes. Because Christ has nobody, nobody but yours with which to be the light of the world. This is the definition of what it means to be Christian. To paraphrase John 13 verses 34 and 35. Everyone will know you are a disciple by the love you give. The boldest act of proclaiming Christ as king is to love as Christ has loved us. Not just loving God, that's leg day. We are called to also love ourselves more than anyone thinks possible because that is the standard by which we love our neighbor. So to simplify the constant call and cornerstone of our faith as Christians. Say it with me now. Love God intentionally. Love your neighbor intimately. Go forth and do likewise. At this time, I invite you to join me in the celebration of our commitment by singing the hymn 344, I have decided to follow Jesus. Before me, the world behind me, the 
cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. Both feet, I still will follow. Though none go with me, I still will follow. Though none go with me, I still will follow. Follow Jesus. Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? No turning back, no turning back. This is the time in our service where we celebrate all that we receive traditionally in the form of talent, time, and treasure. Yes, financial offerings are required to be sustainable in our country. However, God's work does not happen without time. Being at time volunteering for the service, feeding the hungry, be it as time advocating for the least of these or developing the talents and skills which benefit our community. In whatever portion our blessings, please join me in thanking God. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus shared his last meal with his disciples. As Christians, we celebrate this meal whenever possible, giving the opportunities for one another to step in the humbling role of servant leader in the kingdom of God. And so today, like Jesus has showed us, I take the bread. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And I take the cup. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For 
as long as you eat this bread, as long as you drink this cup, we continue to be one body, no matter the trials or tribulations. Let us pray. God of all, we thank you for those who came before us and showed us the way. We pray for those who will come after us that we will pass on all we know of you to them. Help us to serve you by serving each other and shut the world that you are God. By being one with each other, we thank you for these symbols of bread and cup before us that remind us of all you gave to restore our relationship with you and with others. Fill us now with your spirit that we can truly be one and that we can bring your good news to the world that longs to hear it. In the name of Jesus Christ, your son, Amen. Amen. join me in saying the Lord's Prayer in the method in which you know it. When we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven. hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debtors as we forgive the debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, For thine is the kingdom, the kingdom and the power and the, and the glory, glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Prepare to receive the benediction as we go back out into the world. The great manifestation of the kingdom, we thank you for gathering us here together in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have loved and we have fed one another. Now I call you to go out into the world and do the same for those that celebrate in different traditions or no traditions at all. By the, be the light of the kingdom by loving your neighbor as yourself, for they know we are Christians by our love. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Remember the lost and remember the lonely.